get back to Dr. Lucy Jones, who is um, um, there was involved a, in a news um, conference here. A foreshock to this earthquake. There was a 3.5 yesterday afternoon. Um, the chance that it could, this 5.2 would itself be a foreshock to something bigger is still the same. It's about 5% chance. Um, so it means, you know, 19 out of 20 times what you're seeing is the biggest one, one out of 20 times uh, it's followed by something bigger. Let's do a bit of a recap, though, just because we have a whole lot more people than when we first said it in English. Um, we had a magnitude 5.2 earthquake at uh, 10.08 this morning. Uh, it seems to be associated with the Elsinore Fault. It's very near the, the town of Julian. The, the depth is relatively deep. It's about 13 kilometers below the surface of the Earth. But that's often what you see with uh, on the big faults like the San Jacinto and the and the Elsinore Fault. The Elsinore Fault is part of the San Andreas system. There's several parallel faults: the San Andreas, the San Jacinto, the Elsinore, and then the Newport Inglewood. Uh, and they get progressively less active as you move farther to the west. So uh, this one is definitely, on average, has fewer big earthquakes than the San Andreas or the San Jacinto Fault. Um, the, it was felt over a very large area. Uh, we can see, well, uh, we can see the ground motions recorded by our earth, by our instruments suggesting it would have been felt from San Diego or even south of the border uh, up into Los Angeles. That's sort of what you would expect for a 5.2. I mean, a 5.2 is telling you how much energy is released. If you want to talk about what you feel, that's described by intensity. Intensity three would be a level where people sitting quietly notice it, those who are moving around wouldn't. And that definitely seems to describe what we had here in Pasadena. Um, and I think, uh, so it could have been felt out to a pretty wide area. Right on top of it, it would have been pretty strong shaking, probably approaching what's called intensity seven. That intensity six to seven is usually what you see on top of a five. And I'm going to uh, qualify that right now, but given that it's 13 kilometers away from everybody because it's 13 kilometers deep, probably uh, maybe intensity six would be the what we would have seen right on top of it. That will throw objects off of shelves, but really won't be doing any damage to a, a normal California building. Um, it is a intensity five is usually described as when everybody gets frightened, but uh, that also implies that they don't have a lot of experience with earthquakes. Um, so it's a um, there's nothing about it that we see at this point that's surprising, but it would be there shouldn't be structural damage. If there is, it's in a pretty bad building. There would be things displaced off of selves. I would think that Julian has got a lot of, you know, things thrown off of shelves in their shops, for instance. Farther away, uh, it really would just be a matter of, of being felt. Um, there is a question also about tsunami. Uh, as long as the earthquake is on land, you're not going to be... Uh, uh, seeing tsunami, you have to have the fault under the water, displacing the shape, changing the shape of the ocean floor is how you you create a tsunami. Uh, in rare cases, you can do that with just a landslide, but you aren't going to trigger a big landslide enough to cause any sort of tsunami until you're over magnitude seven. So there's really no question about tsunamis before about magnitude seven level. Um, Thank you, Lucy. I have a question that maybe other people are wondering about. Um, several folks from our office were in a, in a Zoom meeting when the shake alert uh, came across. And folks who were up in Pasadena felt the quake before I felt it, and I'm further south from them. So I'm wondering if one of you can talk about why some areas feel earthquakes sooner than others. Um, <clears throat> it's probably not sooner, but perhaps at a stronger level. You want to take that one on, Kate? Or, um, no, you just come in. Okay. I don't know the question. Okay. Uh, the um, uh, way in which people feel things is very dependent on where they're sitting, how much they're moving around. I, and the way, you know, it isn't just one sec, one moment, right? The wave comes through and they'll, you know, it begins with smaller waves and, and the, the P wave is always smaller than the S wave. And you get variations even within that because the waves are bouncing around in the earth off of different rocks and you get a, um, you know, reverb going on, and it can be very location specific. So, um, you know, people might have felt in Pasadena felt an earlier part of the wave, Emily, and you didn't get, you didn't feel it until some stronger secondary thing came in. Perhaps you, they were seeing some, um, uh, they, they might have been, uh, you know, 
feeling part of the P wave and you didn't feel it to the S wave, or there could have been other sorts of variations like that. It's you, you really can't uh, tell that easily.